everybody. It's time to declare your morning. It's a beautiful day, so put a smile on your face. Rest the days go to pay, and new days a new day for you to smile. I'm give you a cup of Tell everybody good morning. You'll feel so much better in the morning. Get up out of the bed and get that sleep out of your eye. Get up out of the bed. It's time to declare. It's time to declare. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's time to declare. Smile on your face. Yes, the day's gonna pay, and today's a new day for you to smile. Tell everybody good morning. You'll feel so much better in the morning. So get up out of that bed. Come on and hold your head up high. Get up out of that bed and get that sleep out of your eye. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. It's time to declare your morning. This is the Declare Your Morning Show, the Good Morning Show, and I'm your host, Benny Duncan. Thank you all so much for being with me once again for another episode of the Declare Your Morning Show. It's a beautiful day to be alive and well. I am super excited about what God has in store for us today. That's right. The heavens are open, opportunities are knocking, dreams are being realized, and God is still in control. So do me a favor. Get up out of that bed. Hold your head up high and get that sleep out of your eye because it's time to declare your morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's time to declare your morning. Please like and share. Please like and share the Declare Your Morning show. Invite your friends and your followers to be a part of the show this morning. We're going to have an exciting an interesting discussion this morning as we continue our topic on today. Let your friends and your followers know uh, that we are here and we're here to declare our morning. Make sure you get yourself some coffee, some cappuccino, some hot cocoa, whatever it is you need to get yourself together so you can go up in that job with some acarite. Some of y'all off today. Y'all don't think I know it, but you're off. And it's all right, because you get to spend more time here, declaring your morning. <laughs> That's right. Good morning, everybody. It's time for the roll call, so let's see who's here. Good morning. Nikki Finnegan is here. Good morning. Joyce Perkins is here. Good morning, little. Uh, Veronica Pauls is here. Good morning. Uh, Prince Jean Taylor Jr. is here. Good morning. Michelle Dennis is here. Good morning. Deborah Hood is here. Good morning. Michelle Johnson is here. Good morning. I see uh, Carolyn Taylor is here. Good morning. All right. Did I see Cherie? Yeah, Cherie Grant is here. Good morning. LaWanda Bryant is here. Good morning. Angela Mooney is here. Good morning. Vanita Towns is here. Good morning. Miss Angela Webb is here. Good morning. Michael Robertson is here. Good morning, sir, to you. Patrice Young, good morning. Let's see. Bonita Bonnie Johnson is here. I didn't put your whole government out there today. Good morning. Loretta Jones is here. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Once again, please like and share. 
and uh, invite your friends and followers to be a part of today's sh show. We thank you all so much for being here. I want to remind you to continue to pray for the bereaved families, those who are sick and shut in, those who are homeless. Continue to pray for them. And while you are praying, ask God, what is it that I can do to be a blessing to somebody in their time of need on today? Amen. Good morning to everybody. Also pray for those who are in authority that we might live a quiet and peaceful life. Pray for those who are in authority today because we have been commissioned by the scriptures to do so. It is our responsibility to pray. We have the responsibility to shift the atmosphere through our prayers and our involvement and our doing what it is God has called us to do to shift the atmosphere. Amen. So our prayers change things. So pray for all leadership from the White House to your house. Continue to pray on today. Amen. Want to say happy birthday to all the birthday babies throughout the month of November. Happy birthday to you. And those of you who are celebrating your anniversary on today, want to say happy anniversary to all of you who are here. So happy anniversary. Uh, if it's your birthday, if it's your anniversary, we want you, we want to love on you. So go ahead and post it up right now. Post up your birthday, post up your anniversary so that we can love on you today. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I saw somebody else come in to the room. Uh, Miss Rosetta Martin is here. Good morning. Who else did I see? Cheryl Dern is here. Good morning. Thank you all for being here on this morning. I uh, want to shout out uh, our teachers and students. I know most of them are out for the rest of the week, but I want to shout you out uh, for making it at least to your break. So we want to continue to pray for you. Uh, pray that God will give you some things to do today. Uh, I'll give you some rest today. How about that? That God will give you some rest on today while you, while you have this holiday season off that God will give you some rest. Amen. So we're shouting out all the teachers and all the students on today, and we want God to give you some rest. Amen. Amen. Thank God for all of our partners and those of you who are um, a part of the Declare Your Morning Show, those of you who continue to sow uh, into God's Purpose Ministries as well as to the Declare Your Morning Show. Uh, we want to continue to thank you uh, constantly and daily uh, for your gifts, uh, you've been uh, we've been allowed to and able to rather uh, to uh, be a blessing uh, to some folks even in this season who may not have anything um, to eat uh, during this season. And so um, we we were able to feed some families. Uh, we connected with Carolyn Taylor, uh, who uh, is is doing her. Carolyn's Kitchen or whatever that she decided to call it, uh, uh, we, <laughs> but we've connected with her and we were able to feed over 15 families uh, in this season. And so God has blessed us uh, through your seeds and your giving uh, to be able to do just that. And so we want to thank you on this morning. Thank God to, for all of our sponsors, my brother Tyrone Hall, uh, from Dynamic Mentoring. Uh, we want to thank God for just all of you who continue uh, to be a blessing to us on a regular basis so that we can continue uh, this work of the Lord, uh, that we don't just speak it out of our mouth, but we get in the community and get involved uh, with what it is that needs to be done. Uh, so people don't care how much you know. They really want to know how much you care. And so we are really, me and my wife, we rode around yesterday and we, we, we made it a point to be together uh, as we uh, delivered uh, those baskets. It was just a blessing, amen, just a blessing uh, to so many people. The people were grateful uh, to receive uh, those, those baskets on yesterday, amen. So God, God bless all of you. For those of you who would like to give, uh, you can do so uh, by way of Cash App. The information is right there on the screen. Thank God for all of you who continue to be a blessing uh, to this ministry. And I want you want to say to you on today, uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. There's some greater things coming in the next coming days. Greater things are coming in the next coming 
uh, days. So stay tuned. Greater is coming. Somebody type that in. I feel that in my spirit this morning. Stay tuned. Greater is coming. Glory to God. I feel like preaching that right there. Stay tuned. Greater is coming. Amen. Glory to God. Lady Michelle is here. Good morning. I see my brother Tyrone Hall is here. I saw a few of you just jump in here. Uh, but those of you who I have not uh, spoken your name already, I want to say good morning to all of you who are here. Uh, great things are coming, I'm telling you. And I'm super excited about it uh, because God is shifting things. God is moving things. And let me say this to you, if you really believe, because I don't see the hearts and the likes going crazy on the screen. If you really believe that greater is coming, let me see the hearts and the likes going crazy on the screen right there. I see uh, Miss Jacqueline Mason is here. Good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, really? I'm talking. I'm not just talking about for this ministry and for my life, but I'm talking about what God is getting ready to do in your life. Stay tuned, because greater is coming. Don't, oh, glory to God. Don't disconnect. Don't get distracted. Don't look to your left. Don't look to your right, because greater is coming. You just got to stay focused. You got to stay. How do you know? I got. I feel I got I to gotta say this here. How do you know that greater is coming? Because the distractions keep showing up. How do you know that greater is coming? Because the enemy is trying to get my focus off of what God has for my life. How do you know that greater is coming? Because I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling and the enemy is trying to get me off the mark. But I'm here to tell you today that greater is coming. And if you would just align yourself with what God is doing in your life, stay focused. Don't you dare let the, oh, glory to God, I feel heaven already. I, don't you dare let the enemy steal your joy in this season. Oh, uh, God, I feel your anointing. I feel your anointing. There's somebody here right now that's saying greater is coming. I don't care what my bank account look like, greater is coming. I don't care what my relationship looks like, greater is coming. I don't care what it looks like all around me. I don't care what the political arena is trying to present to us. I know that what God said in my life, that greater is coming. I don't care what my body feels like, greater is coming. Greater is coming. Somebody say greater. I feel glory now. I said I feel glory now. I feel the glory in the room. This ain't the time to jump off. This is the time to jump on. <laughs> this ain't the time to jump off. I just said this is the time to jump on. Take the next 30 seconds and invite somebody who you know will believe with you, who will agree with you, who will walk with you, who will hold your proverbial hand and agree with you and walk you through this process and say greater is coming. You need to get about, listen, get about 30 folks on here right now and say, I need your agreement to walk with me through this process because I know God is getting ready to do something great in my life. Now, I know what's going on all around. I know the bills need to be paid. I know what the doctor has said. I know what the teacher told me about my kid. I know they, they didn't wrote up an IEP on my child. I know all this stuff is going crazy. But the truth of the matter is that I have a promise from God. And that promise says that greater is coming. So I, I want to let you know, you need to hold on to the promise this morning. You need to hope, glory to God, I feel, I feel a shift here. Greater is coming, and you need to hold to the promise of God. Now, this morning, we are continuing our discussion on assuming the position. We're, yes, we're continuing our discussion on assuming the position. That's right. That's right, Joyce. Say, I'm holding on. Somebody say, I'm holding on. I'm holding on. I'm holding on. 
Because I know that God's hand is not going to change. I know his word is not going to change. And if I could just align myself with the, with the word of God, if I could just, if I could just stay focused, And hopefully we can show you how to do so on today as we continue our discussion on assuming the position. I want to jump right into our conversation on today. Normally I give you a brief synopsis of the review of what I have already previously spoken about. Uh, but today uh, this word is so rich I've got to get right into it. Good morning, pray low. Uh, I, I got to get right into it. And I want you to write these things down. Those of you who are good typers and, and quick typers, I need you to get right in there and type some things this morning. Amen? All right. All right. So th today I want to speak about use, using the correct posture. Using the correct posture. Using the correct posture. Many of us can't move into our next level. Glory to God. You can't move into your next level of operation in God. It's because you have the wrong posture. Amen. My job here is to give you instruction in righteousness. And so uh, I teach piano lessons and organ lessons. Um, and one of the biggest things... Uh, that is important. One of the things that was impressed upon me, even in singing and things of that matter, um, is the correct posture. You, you got to stand up straight. You got to sit on the edge of your chair and hold your back up straight. And you got to have the correct posture in order to sing. You have to have the correct posture in order to play music. One of the things that I stress in the beginning of, of teaching music is uh, how to make sure that you have the correct posture because the correct posture, even in how you hold your fingers and how you, uh, uh, you know, your back is straight, your, your head is held up, you, you have, it, it even teaches you a level of confidence when you have the right posture. All right. So today we want to talk about using the correct posture. And uh, there are there are five areas. Glory to God. There are five areas of correct posture that I want to speak about on today. There are five areas of correct posture uh, that I want to talk to you about on today. Now, uh, it is imperative uh, that you get these scriptures in your spirit. I want you to go back and read them on a regular basis. I want you this, this to be a part of your daily regimen, just like it is when the doctor gives you a prescription. He gives you enough for the month or enough for three months. Well, I'm giving you enough for the year. You need to take this and take this every morning when you get up to remind yourself, this is my posture. All right, so five five key points and five uh, things that I want you to focus on in order for you to keep the correct posture. Posture, all right, okay? So one, number one, think. It is important uh, that you understand in, you know, what to think about in this season. Hear. It is important uh, that you understand what it is I must hear or listen to in this season. Speak. All right. What comes out of your mouth is very, very important. Uh, act. Acting has a whole lot to do with making a decision. We'll come back and talk about that, Lord's willing, on tomorrow. Uh, acting has a whole lot to do with uh, moving, hearing God speak and moving without reservation. And then you can see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Uh, so think, hear, speak. Act and see. All right. Think, hear, speak, act, and then see. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's look at, uh, I got some prescriptions for you this morning. So uh, we got to go really quickly here. Uh, Proverbs. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Proverbs 23, 
verse 7. All right. Uh, very familiar passage of scripture. Good morning, Zanita. Uh, very familiar passage of scripture uh, here. Uh, for as a man, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. All right. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Okay. As, as, as you think, what, whatever you think in your heart, and that's, that's crazy. Like you say your heart doesn't think, but you think what's in your heart. <laughs> you think whatever's in your heart. All right. So, so how do I, and we'll get into some, some more of this, uh, uh, as, as we move about. All right. As we move about, we'll understand a little bit more uh, and have a clearer understanding of how these how these key elements of keeping the right posture or using the right posture, how these things come together. How do all these things come together? So it's important that we have the right thoughts, right? It's, it's, it's important that we have the right thoughts. Now, let me share this one with you. Uh, uh, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse, verse 5. Glory to God. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. If I'm going to think with the right mindset, if I'm going to have the right posture, I got to think properly. Okay? Now, I can't tell you that and not give you how to think. All right. So let the, let me let me read this to you. Philippians chapter two, verse five says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So the mind that Christ has is the mind I should have. The mind that Christ operated in while he walked the earth is the mind that I should be operating in even now, as the scripture tells us, as he is. As he is, so are we in this present world. Because we are now the body of Christ. Isn't that interesting? John says, beloved, we are now the sons of God. Right? We are the sons of God. We are the body of Christ. We are Christ in the earth. Wow. We are now Christ in the earth. You are now Christ. Wow. Wow. So you have to allow the mind that Christ had, the, the kind of mind that he operated, the confidence that he had to now be your mindset. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Here's the right posture. Here's the correct posture. If we're going to sit up in God, if we're going to stand up in God, you got to have the right mindset. Here it is. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. I'm about to mess your mind up. Are you ready? I'm about to mess you all up. The mind that Christ had was a God mind. The, the mind that God that Christ had was a God mind. That's why he could say, I and my father are one. Okay? So if you're going to operate with the correct posture, then you have to operate with a God mind. Now, what is a God mind? A God mind says there are no limitations to me. There is nothing I can do. There is no historical events. There is nothing in my, in my pathway. There is no stumbling block that can keep me from imposing my will upon humanity. That's a God mind. Because I have the mind of Christ. And because I operate in the anointing, there is nothing that can stop me. That's the correct posture. That's how you assume the position. 
So when you step up in the room, boom, look who stepped in the room. Can't nobody stop me because I have something on the inside of me that's greater. Oh, glory to God. Greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. I'm here. The champ is here. Because the great one lives inside of me. The champ is here. That's why you ain't got no business walking around with your head hanging down. Because the champ is here. And you insult God by walking around all lumped and sclumped over and, and don't, don't know what to do and, and uh, don't, don't have nothing to say. Don't, you, you just, you're just twiddling your thumbs. You're hoping things go right. That ain't the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ says, it don't matter what is being presented to me. I have the answers. I have the solutions. Because there are no limitations to my life. There's nothing that can stop me. Look what the Bible says. I'm just trying to help you this morning. I might have to come back and teach the rest tomorrow because this is so full here. Let this kind of mind be in you. <laughs> In other words, the same exact mind that he operated in is the kind of mind you must operate in. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. <laughs> I feel glory here. I said nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. I'm all the way up. No matter how I feel in my body, no matter how my mind I may have some, some thoughts in my mind that, that wants to depress me and keep me down and, 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 and wants me to sit over in a corner somewhere and turn the lights off and, and just, just, just be left alone. But that ain't the mind of Christ. So before you leave your house, while you're sitting in your house, make sure you put on the mind of Christ. Look what the Bible says. He being in the form of God. Now, can I help you? Does not the Bible say that we are created in his likeness and in his image? We, that means we have God's form. Or as it is studied out, his formalities, his characteristics. We have God's character inside of us, his creative ability. So you will go as far as your mind will take you. You will go. If you get stopped, it's because you've taken off the mind of Christ. If you, oh, glory to God. If you get stopped in this season, if you have limits in you, in this season, if you have stuff that stands in your way in this season, it's because you need to put on the mind of Christ. Because nothing can stop Christ. Not even the cross. Not even the grave. Oh, grave. Where is your, oh, y'all not talking to me this morning? Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? It's been swallowed up in victory. Nothing can stop him. And because nothing can stop him, there's nothing that can stop you. If you put on the mind of Christ, let this mind, that word let means to allow. God ain't going to superimpose his will upon you. You've got to allow it to happen. You said, God, well, when are you going to do it? God's going to do it when you do it. We'll get to that in a second. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. The Bible says that we are heirs and joint heirs with God, which means you are equal with God. I know this is blowing your mind, but you've got to understand that until you operate with the right posture, you're not going to get kingdom results. <laughs> until you, oh, glory to God, I feel heaven. I said until you learn how to operate with the right mindset, you're not going to get kingdom results. 
You got to get in the right posture. Here it is. Let this my this is the first this is the first key. I ain't even got to the rest yet. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but watch this, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and made and was made in the likeness of men. So when God introduced you to time, you took upon the form of a servant and you were made into the likeness of men. So you look like men, you look like mankind, but a God that is great is inside of you. <laughs> so you walk in humility, but your actions display the will of God. I got to go, I got to go. I can't mess with y'all this morning. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, Wherefore, watch this, God also hath highly exalted him. Ooh. God highly exalted him and has given him a name which is above every name. Can I talk to you? When you put on the mind of Christ and you walk in humility and allow God to do in your life what he wants to do with no limitations, no boundaries. There's no setups. There's no stumbling blocks that can stop you. God says, I will make your name great. I wish I had time. I will make your name great when you walk in the right posture. When you stop complaining. When you stop talking about what you can't do. What can't be done. What you got to do. This stuff is piling up on me. I don't know what in the world is going on. The devil is getting on my nerves. The devil is really busy. The devil is doing this. The devil is doing that. Well, what is God doing? What is God doing? You're giving the devil so much credit that you ain't got God in your mind. Put on the mind of Christ. And watch God make your name great. I got to keep moving. I got to keep moving. Let's look at, uh, whew, I feel heaven here. Uh, let's look at Luke chapter 6. I, I got to keep moving. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm going to try to give you all as much as this as I possibly can without bursting. Here it is. Luke chapter 6. Are you excited? I want to see some excited folks. Let me see the hearts and the lights going crazy on the screen. You're saying you're excited, but I need to see the hearts and the likes. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Let's look at it. Oh, my God. Let me, let me start here. Let's look at verse 43. Let's look at verse 43, and we're going to start there. Here it is. Glory to God. Let's talk about speaking real quick. Let's talk about what we speak out of our mouth. The Bible says, verse, four, uh, verse 43 of Luke chapter 6, says, For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. I'm going to show you how this works in your life. Here it is. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. All right? You'll know the fruit, you know the tree by the fruit that it bears, right? Now, verse 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. I need you to see this. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. Now, I need you to see this. Somebody said, what in the world is going on now? Let me show you. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth 
mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Now, whatever is abundant in your heart, this is what he's going over. He's saying if evil is abundant in your heart, then evil will come out of your mouth. And we're going to identify what is evil in a second. If evil is in your heart, all, will, all that will come out of your mouth, all that you will speak is evil. If, if good is in your heart, all that will come out of your mouth is good. And what comes out of your mouth is called fruit. And what fruit you bear is what you continue to bear. Because whatever fruit, as according to Genesis chapter 1, that when God created the fruit, and the Bible says, each fruit has seed that bears more fruit. So this is the reason why you got to watch what comes out of your mouth. Because what comes out of your mouth, you're going to continue to eat the fruit of it. And it's going to continue to bear that same kind of seed. So you have to govern what comes out of your mouth. If you're going to have the right posture. If you're going to assume the position. Here it is. He says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, the mouth begins to speak. Now the question now is, what is good and what is evil? Good is speaking whatever God has promised you. Good is speaking what God has said about you. Good is identifying the works that he's already designed for you to function in. That's good. Now, if you speak anything other than that, that's evil. And it's because of the condition of our hearts. It's because of the conditioning or the programming that we have received over time to continue to speak what we heard. Oh boy. We'll get to hearing in a second. To continue to speak what we heard that was not of God. You heard that it was going to kill you, so you say, man, this thing is killing me. You, 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 you heard that, 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 that sickness was going rampant and you say, I feel sick. So whatever you speak out of your mouth is because of something that you have received into your heart. Now your mouth is speaking fruit that does not align with what God said about you. Change your heart. Change what you receive. And what comes out of your mouth will only be what God has, has for your life. Good things. God says, I know the plans. Oh, glory to God. I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. I don't have plans to bring you to, 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 to a demise. I don't have plans to kill you. I don't have plans to make you sick. I don't have plans of poverty for you. But I have plans to prosper you. The fullness, everything working, every, everything entire, and you wanting absolutely nothing. That's what prosperity is, the fullness of God in your life. So if you're speaking anything other than that, that's evil. That is not what God has for your life. Change your posture. It's time to shift in your mindset. So as a man thinketh, so is he. And whatever's in a man's heart, he becomes, he starts to speak. And the Bible says, out of the mouth proceeds the issues of life. The reason why you have these issues in your life and the reason why you're partaking in these types of things is because of what's coming out of your mouth. And it's coming out of your mouth because you have a certain heart condition. And until you get your heart transplanted, then you need it. Yes, you need. You say, God created me a new, a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me because I want to speak what you are speaking.
So, so, so how do I speak the right things? Let's look at Romans chapter 10. How do I speak the right stuff? <laughs> Whoo, glory to God, I feel heaven. How, how do I speak the right? How do I speak what God is speaking? Let's look at Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans chapter 10. Oh, glory to God. See, watch this. Let me show something to you real quickly that whatever you have faith in the most is what you'll speak out of your mouth. <laughs> we say, Lord, increase my faith, but what do you have your faith in? What are you investing your faith in today? Are you investing your faith in everything other than what God is saying? Or are you investing your faith in the word of God? Let's look at Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Look what the Bible says. So, so then faith cometh by hearing. We're going to have the right posture. We have to hear the right thing. Here it is. So faith, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, I just can't listen to everything. And I just can't listen to everybody. I just can't be receiving any old thing into my spirit and expect to have the right posture. It's right there in the Bible. I didn't make this up. It's right there in the scriptures. He says, right here, he says, uh, so then, if you're going to have faith, faith is going to come by what you hear. But if you want to have the right posture, if you want to have the mind of Christ, you got to make sure that you hear the word of God. You got to make sure that you rehearse or rehear the word of God, the rehearsal or the rehearing of God's word in your spirit, in your mind, in your soul is going to cause you to begin to speak out of your mouth what you heard. And you're going to have faith. See, you will broadcast what you have faith in. I'm trying to let this go this morning because it's so good to me. It's so good. This word of God is really good. And I'm telling you, it's like sitting at a buffet. Now, I'm not talking about going, going through the buffet line. I'm talking about just don't give me no plate. Just, just let me sit at the buffet. Just let me pull up a chair right here. This is how the word of God is. I feel good here. Faith. Comes by hearing. Comma. So watch what's, what, what you got to understand. Your, your faith is going to come by what you hear. But it's up to you what you invest your faith in. Make sure that you invest your faith in the word of God. That's the right posture. Can we move on? Can we move on? Let's move on to acting. I got a few more moments, so I, I, let's go into overtime. Are we on overtime yet? Yeah, we're well in overtime. <laughs> we're well in overtime. <laughs> I, I'll take I'll take five more minutes, and I'll be out your here. Here it is. Glory to God. Look at James chapter one. We spoke about this. Uh, we read this last week. James chapter 1, verse 22 says, Be ye doers of the word. Now that you heard the word, now that faith has come as a result of your hearing, he says, do the word now. Act on the word. And not hearers only, because if you don't act on the word, if you don't make a decision to move, Today, then you're just deceiving yourself. So act on the word. Get moving. Get started. Write the book. Start the business. Do what it is God has told you to do. Change your life. Shift. Do what's necessary. Get rid of the weights and the sin that does so easily beset you. And look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Put on his mind. He said, don't, 
Just hear the word. It's all right to hear it. It's all right to rehearse it. It's all right to feel good and 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 buck every now and again. Uh, but at the at at the end of the day, you still gotta move. You still gotta act. You have to activate what you heard. That these words, the word of God, is not just so you can feel good. The word of God is not just so you can say that was bomb. That was the bomb. That come. No, that. No, 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 it's not about that. It's about you applying what you hear to your life and acting on it. I got to move. Got to move. Act. Act on it. Now, let's look at, uh, let's look at seeing. Let's see. It. Once you have put on the mind of Christ, you've heard the word of God or you, you speak in the word based on what you hear, you heard the word, now you're acting, you're acting on the word of God, then you can see the word come into fruition. Some of us are thinking that God is going to do something that we don't participate in. God is not doing anything that you're not doing. <laughs> can, I can I tell you the truth? God is not doing anything that we're not doing. You have to participate. You have to participate. You have to get involved. That's why we must act. There's something, there is a movement that God is calling you to do so that you can see. I wish I had time, y'all. I, I don't have time. I don't. Because I love the word. I love the word. I can do this all day. My wife is right there. She'll tell you, I can literally do this all day. Because I love the word that much. Because I know that when nothing else would keep me, the word was there. When nobody else was there to speak and minister to me, the word was right there. So I can do this all day. Don't worry. I'm not going to hold you all day. I'm going to get out your here. Here it is. Genesis chapter, I'm sorry, Exodus 14 verse 3. Exodus 14 verse 3. I'm sorry, verse 13. Verse 13. Exodus uh, 14 verse 13. And, and here's what uh, Moses said to the people. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. Somebody say today. Today. Now, they had, here's the, here's the thing. Now, they had done all that God told them to do. So they could now see what God was doing. Oh, my God. Moses said to the people, don't you fear, right? Because they're looking at the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army is behind them. But they had done the previous night. They had done what God told them to do. They didn't just hear God's word. They put his word into action. And now they're at the place of God's movement in their lives. And it looks like all hells get ready to break loose. It looks like Pharaoh's get ready to come in from behind and I can't even move forward. Have you ever felt like that? Yeah, it feels like the heat of the enemy is on your neck and what's in front of me, I can't get through it. I got something that stands in my way. But, but up until now, I've done everything God told me to do. And now you feel like you can't do nothing. But this is when God will show his salvation. Look what the Bible says. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. Now you can stand still. Stand still implies I was doing something. <laughs> stand still implies that I was walking toward the promise. Stand still implies that I was moving according to God's word. If God has to tell me to stop and stand still, 
That means I was moving in the direction of what he called me to do. So stand still. Now I will show you my salvation. You've done your part. You showed me that you agree with me. Now I'm going to show you something. <laughs> Woo! See the salvation of the Lord. All right, I got one more for you, and, I, and then I'm going to go. You ready? One more for you. Here it is. Look, Let's look at Psalm chapter 46. Whew, man, this is good. This is good. Psalm 46.10. Psalm 46.10. There's a song that says, after you've done all you can, after you've applied the word in your heart, after you put on the mind of Christ, there even came a time when Christ said, you know what? If it be possible, take this cup from me. There even came a time for Christ where he was in the garden of Gethsemane praying to the father, praying to the sweat came down like drops of blood. And he was like, if it's possible, God, take this from me. Nevertheless, it ain't my will. I know I feel I feel stuck right now. I know I feel like I don't know what to do right now, but I'm getting ready to stand still and see, see his salvation. I'm going to see what you can do now, God. Father, take over. 46 and 10 says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen and I will be exalted in the earth. Now, how does God know this? Because God has a people that will agree with him that's going to align themselves with what God says. The Bible says he works all things after the counsel of his own will. So when you align yourself with God's counsel and you put on the mind of Christ, God says, I'm going to use your life to be exalted among the heathen, the folks who care nothing about God, the folks who have no, no mindset toward God. He said, I will be exalted. I'm getting ready to show you something. What I can do with your life to bring glory to my name. I will be exalted in all the earth. Not just at your address. Not just in your community. Not just in your little few. Your four no more. God says I'm getting ready to blow your mind to the extent I'm going to expand my kingdom through your life. When you put on the correct posture, assume the position. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the abundance of your word, for the overflow of your word, for the glory that's found in your word. Your word is true. Your word is life. Your word is peace. Your word gives us joy. And so we find ourselves in your word. We rest in your word. And your word we will hide in our hearts that we might not sin against you, that we might not never say anything out of our mouths that goes contrary to your word. But we shift our mindset this morning. We put on the mind of Christ. Glory to God. We put on your mind so that we can move in what you're doing. So we can function in your design. Help us, oh God, to use the right posture today. And we'll do it your way. We'll do it your way. We'll operate in you. We will move in you because it's in you we live, we move, and we have our being. You are the breath we breathe. So have your way, God. As we assume the position, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. 
Well, I got to go. But I want to let you know that you are victorious. God is on your side. Make sure you look everybody in the eyes and smile. Speak first and last. Show the love of Jesus Christ because he's been so good to you. Ain't no need of walking around with no frown. Turn that frown upside down. It's time to declare your morning. And I got to go. But I want to let you know. I can't let you go until I give you some of this uh, feel-good music. Some good morning music. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's time to declare your morning. It's a beautiful day, so put a smile on your face. Yes, the day's gonna pay, and today's a new day for you to smile. Tell everybody good morning. You feel so much better in the morning. time i want you to experience what's new what's now and what's next good morning good morning good morning everybody it's time to declare your morning it's a beautiful day so put a smile on your face yes the day's going to pay and today's a new day for you to smile tell everybody good morning you feel so much better in the morning. Oh, so get up out of that bed. Come on and hold your head up high. Get up out of that bed and get that sleep out of your eye. Get up out of that bed. It's time to declare.